Hi, on the occasion of Republic Day, I thought in the way that the new, young, contemporary, modern India is making waves all over the world, I thought I'll, I'll try and take some of that uh, waves and, and, and create something contemporary when it comes to food. I'll start off with a southern Indian fish and we'll be using, instead of a traditional Indian fish like a pearl spot, I'll be using some sea bass. I'm going to just quickly season the fish with a bit of salt, some red chilli powder, a little bit of turmeric, some fennel and black onion seeds. And I know fennel and black onion seeds are not particularly um, traditionally South Indian, but I like to kind of embellish dishes a little bit with this. And we also put a bit of, bit of oil just to, just a drizzle of oil. So, that done, let me chop some garlic. I describe my style of cooking as uh, creative uh, or evolving modern Indian. And that's what I've been doing in my restaurant, The Cinnamon Club, uh, for the last 14 years at, in London. And we started a new wave of restaurants that uh, actually set a new benchmark and changed people's perception of Indian food. Move the whole thing in. Once again, a little bit of salt, a little bit of red chilli powder, cracked black pepper I love a touch of sugar and some vinegar. Food is about twists, but food for me is also about connections. No matter what you do, there is a role and a place for spice. and It can actually lift your traditional dishes to some point. So I called it a banana leaf wrap fish. We will take some of this lovely crunchy mix that we made. We're going to put a piece of fish on top and a little bit more of the crunch, the crust that we made. We just wrap it really nicely, like so, like an envelope, and go. So let's get a pan nice and hot. Okay, let's see. So we put these nicely on a really hot pan with the seal side down and we let it cook for a couple of minutes. Now in the meantime, what I'd like to do is just to prepare some of this chutney. For the chutney, I've got some beautiful green mango. I'm going to chop it up roughly. Okay, great. Mix it with some more. I'm going to mix all of this sort of chopped mango, some garlic and shallot. We'll give it some more ground red chilies, a little bit of salt and some sugar. So I can see my fish is cooking beautifully, it's just sort of cooking itself away, right, I let it carry on. Now this is a beautiful, refreshing, cooling yogurt and vegetable rice mixed in and it's going to get that sort of kick and a bite with this last minute tempering I'll do with mustard seeds and curry leaves. Okay, so nice crackle and sizzle and pop of some mustard seeds and curry leaves. Last minute. So let's begin to plate up here. This tempering is ready. So I'm just going to add it all. Pull the pan of fish back. Nice, crispy, crunchy yogurt rice. These really fried mustard seeds look like caviar. Look like a bit like mustard caviar. Okay. Let's just put a tiny bit of the yogurt uh, for the green mango and coconut chutney. Perhaps there. Because we're generous, we also do a bit of that. 
Let's get a piece of the fish out. And as they say, you know, you eat with your eyes first. So a little bit of drama, a little bit of attention in presentation actually goes a long way in the enjoyment and appreciation of the dish. Let's get a bit of that. Actually, sprinkle. Serve a nice, generous mound of the yogurt rice they made. It's this beautiful, moist, sort of fresh fish. And it's got a bit of a kick and a bite. So final few jewels of pomegranate. And here you have your Kerala spiced sea bass wrapped in a banana leaf with a cooling yogurt rice and a green mango and coconut chutney. Enjoy. Classic or contemporary, no meal can be complete without a roundup of sweets. And what, if you ask me, is India's favorite, favorite dessert of all times? I think 90 out of 100 people would have said a carrot halwa. Now, what I take, a familiar carrot halwa, and turn it on its head, and turn that into a spring roll. What I've got here is two different carrot halwa mixes. One made with uh, a very rare to find black carrots, and the regular orange carrots. What we've got, I mean, you could buy, whether it's London or Dubai or India, most of us are able to buy ready-made carrot halwa anyways. Um, this is one of the things, one of the joys of the popularity of Indian food as well as Indian cuisine all over the world. What I do is I take this, um, I take this sort of carrot halwa, one half of it. This is the orange one, and then I take a little halwa made out of black carrots. And when they're in season, black carrots, I mean, they might be a little bit difficult or uh, difficult to get hold of, but I tell you, it's well worth the effort, especially if you were making your own. Make sure that you've got equal quantities of both. Um, turn that sort of like so. You know, you just roll it up into a spring roll. Um, perhaps use a bit of water or even a bit of batter to seal off the edges, so which is what I'm going to do now. And voila. So you've got one. Nicely roll it. Nicely sort of <clears throat> roll it in corn flour. Keep it like that. Let me just see how it how it drops and how it fries. It really is important. Let's see how that does. Um, Let's try them in. And I also love the fact that these days you're easily able to buy spring roll pastry. It's something that you, you know, you'd find in most good supermarket stores anyways. Um, I can't remember the last time I saw anybody make their own spring roll pastry. Although if you were to Google something, you would find recipes for just nicely right up. So I love the way, you know, it's just quite simple. So what I'm going to do here is perhaps just have a bit of some pistachio in here. I love serving this with a it's with a very simple iced double cream flavored with cloves. Just a bit of chopped pistachios on top of this, as if you like, a bit of texture. And there you go, your carrot halva spring rolls with a clove flavored iced double cream. That's your dessert to round off a really good meal with.